Bike fits. We all need them, but they're expensive, right? And I spent a ton of money on a new bike last November, but because of supply chain issues, I didn't necessarily get the bike that was the right size for me. I just bought the one that was available. If you're a bike fitter, that probably made you cringe. There's gonna be more of that. So let's keep a tally. To add pressure to the situation, I was about to start training with my very first bike coach, Cam Nichols. Training looked intense. I had a new bike, about to start training. My knee aches, my neck is sore. I needed a bike fit. You have to like get an appointment. What if your appointment doesn't happen on time? Maybe I should just do the bike fit myself. Now, let's just skip over all of those excuses and my propensity to DIY things, not because it's the best solution, but because of my crippling social anxiety and my ability to learn things quickly isn't really a reflection of how smart I am, but rather a coping mechanism I've developed to avoid uncomfortable situations. That's not important. What is important is what I found. It's perfect. Okay, that's not exactly what happened. I actually spent several days researching and reading through all of their articles. And I even emailed Justin, one of the founders, asking him a bunch of questions. He was super responsive and offered to let me try the pro plan for free. Hashtag YouTuber perks. Okay, that's not like a bike fit or cringe. I think that's more of just like a universal cringe. Let's talk about my first fit. So I signed up, I entered all my info, and I did a flexibility test. I have this weird thing where I have very flexible hips, but inflexible hamstrings and calves. Not the point of this video. Well, it is the point. They had a nice mobility assessment <laughs> that incorporated all of that info, plus the bike that I was fitting and how aggressive I wanted my position to be. So my Velo Fit took all of that information and then combined with a video I shot on my phone, it computed a suggestion. And the results were a little surprising. My first recommendation looked pretty good. In fact, it was almost perfect. So, you know, maybe I didn't need a bike fit after all. It's obviously not optimized. And up at the top, you can see they give suggestions. They said, raise your saddle 10 mil, pull it back 5 mil. And I figure I'm here to get the bike fit, so let's try it out. Round two done, it's now telling me to raise my saddle another five mil and reduce my handlebar reach by 10. Raising the saddle, easy. Reducing the reach, I need a new stem. Luckily, I have a shorter stem. Before all of this, I watched a bunch of bike fit videos on YouTube and based solely on those videos, I went out and bought a 100 millimeter stem to replace my 110 millimeter stem. Did I know if I needed that stem? No. I just made a guess because it seemed like in every bike fit video they give a shorter stem. So I bought one. But look who was right. So I put the shorter stem on and I also bought some narrower handlebars based solely on YouTube video recommendations. In my defense, I have pretty narrow shoulders. I did measure my shoulders first to make sure that it was legit. And I went from 42 centimeter handlebars down to 38 centimeter handlebars. And while we're talking about completely unfounded purchases that were made because of bike fit YouTube, I bought some orthopedic insoles as well. So at this point, I had done exactly the opposite of isolating the variables and testing one at a time. Instead, I just sent a smorgasbord of new options and put them all on my bike and then tested it. Okay, so as might be expected, changing a bunch of stuff messed up <laughs> everything. I pretty much have to change every single thing. Remember, I started at this point and I ended up here. This is not the way to use this program, but I'm stubborn. And speaking of stubborn, there's something else I haven't told you yet. I had a secret agenda. I wanted to slam my stem. I really wanted to slam the stem. I was gonna slam that stem, even if it meant ending up with a bad bike fit. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't do that. But what I would do is go through as many iterations as possible until I found a bike fit that worked and I gotta slam the stem. 20, it took, it took 20 iterations. Luckily, you don't get charged for each time you run through the program. You pay a fee for like the full year and you get unlimited fits. It's pretty awesome. But I got there. <laughs> uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't perfect. There are still a few suggestions, but hear me out. I was mostly in the ranges and more importantly, my stem was, <clears throat> I mean, um, uh, I was comfortable on, on the bike. I was comfortable. Take that bike fitters. Now that I had the fit, training could begin. 
The true measure of a bike fit, I guess, is not what it's like for one hour on the day of the fit, but rather what it's like during the days and hundreds of miles after the fit. So I locked it in and then I rode. I put over a thousand miles on my bike in that position from December through the middle of January. And during that time, two important things happened. Unfortunately, I only captured those two things in vertical video. So we're gonna have to deal with that for a moment. First off, over time, I could not stand the look of the chimney on my bike. The chimney is the portion of the fork that extends above the stem when you've slammed the stem. Yes, I know you're tired of hearing about the stem being slammed. I cut that chimney off. Have you ever done a thing and didn't realize how dangerous it was until it was over? That was, yeah. I had a friend text me and basically say like, whoa, dude, I can't believe you did that. And then I was like, oh yeah, I can't believe I did that. Cutting off the chimney obviously like limits my bike fit options and my resell value. Anyway. Uh, I ended up buying a new stem that allows for a little bit of extra flexibility and it looks good too. It's the NV Aero stem. Uh, because of the way it's built, they let you move the stem forward or backward a bit and you can change the angle all while still looking super good. Now, I don't even wanna talk about what it was like routing the cables through the handlebars after I put on that new stem, so I'm not going to. The second thing that happened during those first thousand miles on that bike fit was a five hour indoor training ride. It was just as fun as it sounds. Originally it was supposed to be a New Year's Day, like outside ride, but my Wahoo head unit was in for repairs. So I had no way of recording my outdoor rides. And because if it doesn't happen on Strava, it didn't happen at all. I decided I was gonna ride indoors so I could record it. Four hours into the ride, uh, my butt was not feeling great. <laughs> Just to say that. I had to stand up like every 10 minutes, pain, pressure points right on my sit bones. I immediately started looking for a new saddle. And as I have mentioned in a previous video, has a nice cutout so I can one day have children. It is important to me that my body parts work. So I ended up landing on one of the Physique uh, 3D printed models, the Physique and Terra's. I think is how you say it, R3, not the most premium, but again, I mean, it's pricey, but you gotta do what you gotta do to, you know, when it's important, it's important. I picked that one up because of YouTube again. What I learned is like, you could sit in multiple points on this new saddle, whereas my old saddle, a short nose saddle, basically required you to sit in the same position the entire ride. So over a five hour ride, sitting in the same position, I mean, it doesn't matter how comfortable the saddle is or how dialed in your bike fit is, like there's going to be pain. And spoiler alert, with this new saddle, none of those problems. Have you been looking at my shirt and wondering where I got it from? It's from a company called Seedon. They make shirts, they sent me a couple, they're super comfortable. I'm not sweating through them, which is a problem for me. They're made for hiking and things. And also, packaging is super sustainable too. I'm recycling it right now. There are links in the description, there are discounts. Thank you, Seedon. So to recap, I had a bike fit, that I rode with for over a thousand miles. And with the exception of the indoor trainer issues, no pain at all. Like my knees felt great. I was riding further and faster than I ever had before. I had no problems with the outdoor rides. I was feeling really good with it. But as I do, I had thrown a wrench in it because I had a new saddle and I had a new stem. So I needed a new fit. Luckily, as I mentioned before, you get unlimited fits for the year that you sign up with my Velo Fit. So all I had to do was open it up, set up my camera, get on my trainer, and voila! Three iterations later, I had a perfect fit. Look at this, no suggestions. All in the green up top, and only slightly out of range with knee extension and flexion. But you know, those ranges are really just recommendations, right? By the way, if you're a bike fitter, let me know how accurate this uh, cringe counter has been. The reality is, I have a short torso and very long legs. Not everybody lines up perfectly in these ranges and they really are more of guidelines. You gotta do what works for you. That fit was 500 miles ago and I feel fantastic. Did it make me faster? Well, that's kind of complicated because I was in the middle of a training program. <laughs> but what I can tell you is it feels dialed in. I'm super comfortable on the bike, at least as comfortable as you can be on a bike 
when you're you know doing long rides or vo2 max efforts and you're really pushing everything like that's a different kind of pain the pain as in like oh my knees hurt like that doesn't exist my back doesn't hurt like everything feels really good long story short i'm super pleased with it like i love the ability to kind of tinker with it over time i think that's a great selling point they do also have the option to have your like fit reviewed by an expert if you want to just like futz around with things because you're slightly afraid of people and if, like you can do that too yeah I, sh I should probably do the expert review if you want to try it out there's a link in the description i do get a kickback if you use that link in the description so please use that link in the description there's also a free version and you can try that out it's a really good deal 75 dollars unlimited fits you can use it on multiple bikes like if you have a peloton or a mountain bike it's a no-brainer in my opinion i'm biased but it's no brain. Next video is about training with a bike coach. In the meantime, you can watch this video about why I love my bike so much, or you could, you know, go outside and ride your bike. <laughs>